Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Isaac Iwaze. I want to thank you once again for taking your time to sit in front of your telecast to listen to this message. Again, I'm going to be speaking on something that is of paramount importance in our lives. That is what I call sin. Before I begin my message today, I'm going to have a word of prayer with you. Heavenly Father, may honor and glory be unto your holy name. May your name be glorified. Father, Lord, I thank you for these ones that, have, that you have given the opportunity to listen to this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch their lives and their life will not be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, it is my prayer that as you listen to this message, at the end of it, the Holy Spirit will make changes in your life. Like I said before, I'm going to be speaking about sin. What is sin? Sin is an act of breaking the law. Now, when we talk about sin, we are talking about a deliberate act of breaking the commandment of God. Now, the commandment of God started from the Garden of Eden. When God gave commandment to Adam and Eve, he told them not to eat of the fruit of knowledge and evil. But when the devil saw that God had given them commandment, he went back to the Garden of Eden and deceived Adam and Eve to break the commandment of God. And we know that from that moment, the life of man was never the same again. Because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, we have so much, a lot of miseries that came unto man. We have death, we have sufferings of different magnitude, disease, poverty. The life of man has never been the same again. My friend, it is very, very dangerous to engage yourself in a sinful life. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. He suffered, and at the end of it, he was crucified. He shed his blood, which, of course, was a sacrifice for you and I to, be, to become children of God. At the end of three days, our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave. He went to heaven, and right now, is seated at the right hand of the Most High God. My friend, the reason that our Lord Jesus Christ did that was to purge us of all unrighteousness, was for the remission of our sins. But now, the issue we are dealing with tonight is, is it reasonable for us, those of us that have proclaimed the goodness of God, those of us that have laid down our life for our Lord Jesus Christ, those of us that have come to him and say, Lord, forgive my sins. I have been a sinner. Is it ideal or reasonable to go back and continue to dwell in sin? In the book of Romans, we are meant to understand that we cannot continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid. Unfortunately, there are so many churches today that, are, that, are, that are, their preachings has nothing to do with whether you commit sin or not. And a lot of these churches are engaged in how you can prosper, how you can make a lot of money, how you can acquire material things. And some of these churches, unfortunately, are even preaching that it, grace covers your sin. It doesn't matter the kind of life you live. My friend, I want to make you understand that the judgment of God is going to fall upon the children of disobedience. Our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. He did not come into this world so that he can give us a ticket to go and commit sin. He came into this world so that he can give us the power and the ability to overcome sin. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in his word, he said, my sheep hears my voice and I know them. And if you do what I've commanded you to do, you are my friends. So, in, in other words, what our Lord Jesus Christ was telling us is that if we listen to him and do his commandment, which of course is the commandment of God, because he said in his word that not all that said, Lord, 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 we enter the kingdom of God, but those that do it the will of my Father in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ made us to understand that we have to obey the commandment of God. You may come to him and say, Lord, I've, I've given my life to you. Please come into my life. I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. But when you go back and begin to commit sin and begin to live according to the direction of the devil, you will no wise enter the kingdom of God. I'm going to go into the scripture this uh, uh, today and then let us see what our Lord Jesus Christ said about sin. I'm going to the book of Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21. He says, 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I knew you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. My friend, you don't want that to happen to you. We, 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 all, we all have but a short time on this earth. Don't let the lust of the flesh drive you into internal doom. My friend, no sinner will have a place in the kingdom of God. You cannot go about committing fornication and adultery, stealing, lying, doing all manner of sins, thinking that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ has covered your sin, and so you will go to heaven. It's not going to happen. Again, I'm going to the scripture. Another scripture, I'm going to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 5 to 7. It says, For this you know that no warmonger, no unclean person, no confessious man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. My friend, you cannot deliberately engage yourself in sin thinking that Christ has given you the grace to do that. You cannot deliberately engage yourself in sin thinking you will go to heaven. It's not going to happen. If the devil has been deceiving you, we have to understand that this is the end time. There are so many heresies in churches. A lot of churches, they, 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 in fact, what they are doing, the devil is using a lot of these people to deceive their followers, which of course we understand from the scripture. That is going to happen at the last days. My friend, the only way you can differentiate yourself from the devil is to obey the commandment of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Until your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ made us to understand that if our life is not different from the people of the world, you will not enter the kingdom of God. He did not come to hang himself on the cross of Calvary with blood gushing out of his body. So that you can go to Paris on weekend. So that you can go commit adultery. So that you can go commit fornication. So that you can hook yourself on drugs. And thinking that you will go and live in the kingdom of God. It's not going to happen. Don't be deceived. But you have the power to change this morning. The Holy Spirit will give you the strength to change. I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, may honor and glory be unto your holy name. May your name be exalted forever. I pray for these ones that have been that have been hooked on one thing or the other, that you may give them the power to overcome it. We know that we cannot continue to live in sin that grace may abound. Heavenly Father, as many of them that have fallen on their nail, asking for repentance, Father, I pray that you forgive them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.